I love traumatizing myself. Hey, hi, hello, let's talk scary books. Okay, I have a stack of books that have scared me over the years. Just wanna throw this out here, something to noodle on for the person who decides to comment on this later that I didn't find any of these books scary. These are not scary books. Da -da 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 -da. I wouldn't have included this on this list. Ba -ba 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 -ba. By all means, make your own list. Tag me in it. I would love to know what scares you. I love knowing what scares people. I myself love being scared. These books have scared me. They're primarily horror. I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. And if I do talk about any type of spoilers, I will notate it in the screen or, and I will speak to, I'm going to talk about a spoiler, but I will try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. I have talked about a few of these books in previous videos, not all of them. Some are new additions to this list. All of these, I think I would categorize, most of these I would categorize under horror. And with that, please check trigger warnings if you have any sensitivities. There's some, some of these have some really dark disturbing content and I would hate for you to upset yourself diving into any of these without knowing what you're getting into. And with that let's talk about some scary books. Okay the first book I'm going to talk about I have not had a chance to talk about at length because I read it on my kindle and when I film my wrap-up videos sometimes I forget <laughs> about them because I don't have a physical book to hold up. And that book is Where I End by Sophie White. This is an Irish horror. Oh my god. How do, how do I even go about, hold on. I have my notes on my computer so if you like see me looking down a little bit that's why. Where do I even begin with this book? Um, <laughs> I read this last month or a month before last and I got this an arc and I think what got me hooked on it was one of the Goodreads comments was this book broke me. I've never sobbed in horror at a book before. So I was like, oh, I gotta read this book. This is about a young woman who lives on an island off the coast of Ireland in a very small, isolated community where really nothing good has ever happened. The people don't take kindly to outsiders and they definitely don't take kindly to the main character. Her name is um, Avine and this is just a little, this is from the back of the book. My mother, at night, my mother creaks the house creaks along with her. Through our thin shared wall, I can hear the makings of my mother gurgle through her body, just like the water in the walls of the house. This, I went into it with just like the bare, like it's the barest of plots on the back. So if you like to enter your horror books blind, this one would be great. So if you don't want to hear anything else, please skip ahead. Teenage Avine lives in this ramshackle house. Her dad is not really around. Her mom is this, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. Her mother is bed bound and you're not really sure how she got to th being this way at first. And there's someone in the village who comes and takes care of her, but it's mainly Avine who is the primary caretaker. And she refers to her mother as it or the bed thing. It's all from Avine's point of view. She really doesn't have any love or care for her mother. Just how it's described, she describes her just sounds like this catatonic ghostly figure that's in this house who is strapped to the bed and they have to wheel around the house and dress up like a doll whenever her dad does decide to come by. <sighs> Um, feeding her and changing her, bathing her, and the way it was written was like very whiplash because you'd be reading, this is da da da, yeah this is sad, but da 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 da, and then it's like BAM! Like something really disturbing from Avene's, from Avene, and then she goes to the next thought and it's just like, oh my god, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so Avene like desperately wants to have a family. She definitely desperately wants to have someone to take care of who will appreciate the care that she gives and she wants to be mothered to she wants to mother something that will appreciate being mothered her dream comes true when a when a artist comes for residency on the island and brings her new baby with her and Avine finds something to focus all her unrelenting love on <laughs> It was wild. It's insane. It's so heartbreaking. The writing is so beautiful even though it's equal parts upsetting and disturbing. It's true horror. I love how tight the tension was throughout. I feel like the story and the main character I'm not gonna be able to stop thinking about for months and I mean that as the highest compliment ever. I think A24 would have a field day with this story and uh it like it did make me very nauseous at some point just like some of the descriptions and what was happening and oh yeah proceed with caution that's all I'm gonna say you're not new here that's what I have talked about before but I love recommending it 
so much. And that's Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach. This is legitimately one of the scariest books I've ever read. The plot is so unique and well thought out and constructed. It's essentially six to seven chapters of memories from the main character's childhood that just haven't sat right with him. It's about him revisiting these memories from a point in time where he was a boy with his single mom and they moved to this new house in this neighborhood next to this big swath of woods. All of these disturbing weird incidents start to take place. By him revisiting all these mem memories it starts to build a very disturbing bizarre and frightening story. I was reading this alone at home at night. I had to close the book and put it down because I was getting so freaked out that someone was watching me. It was freaking me out so bad but I wanted to keep reading because I wanted to know what was happening. I wanted to know what the big reveal is. The way the story unfolded, <sighs> this sounds silly but it almost seems possible that something like this could happen and I think this started as like a string on like an online forum like reddit or creepypasta with notes and like people commenting and like he start and then get to videos and then he put it all together in a book and I want to read more Days in Auerbach because this oh it's so I really love it. I really, really do. I recommend this to a lot of people. I think it's really freaky. One of my favorite scary books. Yeah, highly, highly recommend. But no. Oh yeah, this one's fun. I've never talked about this one before because I read this, I read this a long time ago, but I, it still stays with me. Also one of the best audiobook experiences I've ever had. Like performances, it was, it was so great. That book is Hell House by Richard Matheson. Let me paint a picture for you all. Listening to this audiobook in October, I'm driving from Tennessee to Virginia in the rain. It's dark. It's cloudy. It's moody. The vibes were there. The creepy vibes were all there. This is the only Richard Matheson book I've read, but if you didn't know, he also wrote I Am Legend, which I also really, really love. Not not the not the Will Smith movie that's too traumatizing, but the one with Vincent Price, like The Last Man on Earth or something. So great, so great. Anyway, back to Hell House. The story centers around four people. Dr. Lionel Barrett, physicist with an interest in parapsychology, his wife, Edith, and then two mediums, Florence Tanner, who's a spiritualist, and Benjamin Franklin Fisher who had visited the house 30 years prior. And Hell House has a horrifying history. These four are hired by a multi-millionaire <laughs> who's dying to investigate the possibility of life after death. The house has been known to be the most haunted house in the world due to the sheer amount of violence, depravity, perversion that went on decades earlier. And they go into it in the book and it's it's pretty horrible. It's a really great mix of mystery and supernatural horror as the group discovers more and more about the house its history and then various influences start to affect each other each of the four's personal weaknesses. <laughs> Some parts are genuinely so terrifying and well done. I was like gripping my steering wheel like oh my god what is happening. It was like watching a movie and I don't recommend. They actually did make this movie I think in the 70s. It's so bad. Don't watch it. But this is Haunted House done right. Like I think it's so hard to pull off a, haunted, a good Haunted House story. That's just my opinion. Just my opinion. I think it's really hard to pull off a haunted house story in a book. Oh, but I also have another one on this list <laughs> that actually does haunted house really good, but this one's great. I do recommend the audiobook as well as actually reading it, but the audiobook, I forgot the narrator. It was like, I got on Audible, this was like years and years ago. What a great performance. It really puts you there and how horrifying it is. Ah! Uh, yeah, I need to read more Richard Matheson. All right, next. I've briefly talked about this book before. This is the only Adam ne no. I've read two Adam Neville books. I want, I read one at, um, for Summerween that I hated his new release. He's very well known for his folk art horror, which I think he does extremely well. And that book, this chonker, is Last Days by Adam Neville. Oof. I read this last year. Scared the crap out of me. Scared the crap out of me. Some of the scenes are written so vividly. Oh my god. Um, sorry. Last Days follows Kyle, who's a guerrilla filmmaker, and he's in dire straits. He's kind of been doing these odd little projects over the years, and he hasn't had a hit in a long time. Over 10 years. Out of the blue, he gets an assignment to do a documentary based on this infam infamous cult, the Temple of Last Days. The cult became a worldwide phenomenon in the 70s, where there was a mass 
massacre within the cult, including its leader, Sister Catherine. So Kyle and his best friend, who's also the cameraman, the sound person, Dan, start to interview those in the case who are still alive. And then strange and disturbing events start to plague the shoot and Dan and Kyle. It seems like Kyle, just the mere fact of him looking into this cult, looking into the surviving members, has woken something up. And it starts to bleed into the filmmakers' lives until there's like basic, they're like practically like there's no escape. And there's this rush to figure out the whole story and get out alive. That's like most of the book. There's, he really pumps up the tension and the terror, especially earlier on in the book. I would say, it's a long book. I would say there's about a dip toward the 70% mark, but <laughs> It's, it, I don't, I didn't even care. I like reading about cults. I like watching documentaries about cults and horror movies surrounding cults. So like I was all invested and I was really impressed with the whole lore that Neville created surrounding the cult. It was really elaborate and fascinating. I was so hooked and the characters were also really fleshed out and believable. It felt like a real story. This could be like some sort of like true, this could be like a really a true crime documentary, just how vivid it was. I really love this. I do want to read other Adam Neville because I really didn't like his new one, which was more cosmic horror. I want to read more of his folk horror because I do think he really shined in this, his talents really shined in this book. And I love the ritual too. I've only seen the movie, but I really like that a lot. So I'm assuming his other folk horror is really good too, but. If you haven't read this, highly recommend. The next book, out of all the books, this one's probably the most tame, but I'm including it on this list because there's a section in the book that ratcheted up my anxiety so high that I was like called Luke. I was like, where are you? Like, I, I need to know where you are right now. Like if something happened, like if we lost cell phone service or like we went dark, like I was like so anxious I couldn't contact him. Or contact my family. And that book is Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wapishing Rice. Whew. This is a slow burn for sure. It's set in Canada. It surrounds a small Anishinaabe community that goes dark as winter is approaching. They're cut off from the rest of the world. People within the community are starting to become worried. They're confused. The food supply is dwindling and the community leaders are really struggling to keep order and keep the town from panic. A stranger arrives with news about the towns that are farther south in the bigger cities and then others start to follow. Tensions are so high, tempers are frayed, and the suspicion is running wild as some of the community members start turning up dead. And then as outsiders start to infiltrate the community, they have to make some really difficult choices. There is such a high level of tension throughout and this growing sense of menace that was really hard to get out from under of until I closed the book. It's very haunting, it's very atmospheric. It's a really good, realistic post-apocalyptic story. And there's a part in the book where you find out what has been going on in the other cities from someone who is there, their perspective. And that's what I was like freaking out. Like the thought of just being absolutely cut off from people who are not in the same vicinity as you and not being able to contact them to see if they're okay. Man, it, it got me, it got me good. I think he has a, sequel to this that's coming out either it's out now or it's coming out very soon which I definitely want to pick up. It's also another haunted house story. <laughs> I have three on this list that I think are done very well. I think I put my foot in my mouth with that earlier statement but this next book is The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. I read this also last year and it's great for Halloween. It's a great spooky read. Very atmospheric, very fall. This is set in the mid 1800s you're following Elsie who is newly widowed and pregnant. She is sent to her late husband's crumbling estate called The Bridge. She's expecting this gorgeous, latticed, lush mansion with servants and a cook and a garden and maids and just this beautiful property and she is sorely disappointed <laughs> upon arriving. The servants cannot stand her as well as the locals in the nearby village who think this whole property is cursed and haunted and just nothing good can come from it. It's bad luck. And so she's really just stuck with her husband's very awkward cousin who becomes like her handmaiden. Yeah, something like that. Or so she thinks that's the only person she's stuck with. <laughs> Behind a locked door, she finds this painted wooded figure 
who looks exactly like her. Elsie isn't superstitious, she doesn't think anything of it, but the servants are terrified, terrified of this wooden lifelike figure. Strange happenings start to happen in the bridge. Elsie also discovers within the same room a journal from her husband's ancestor, Anne Bambridge, and you start to follow a different timeline with these journal entries. All these elements combine to make this really eerie, unsettling story where everything like creeps along. I thought it might have been too slow, but honestly, it's the perfect buildup with this sense of dread throughout and the ending made my jaw drop. It's so, it like, wait, what? Holy. It's such an unsettling read. It's a true gothic horror story. I couldn't put it down, especially later in the book when things truly go off the rails and it becomes so unnerving and spooky scary. Great fall read, great spooky read. This one I know I've talked about before because I put it in my disturbing <laughs> books list and that is Naomi's Room by Jonathan Atcliffe. I love this book so much. It's, I'm actually due for a reread. It's a pretty quick read, but man, it, it's less than 200 pages and it... <sighs> talk about staring at a wall once you finish this book. Man. Naomi's Room is about a young couple, Charles and Laura. They're happily married. They moved into this new house. They live in this very privileged world in Cambridge, academia. It starts off at the Christmas season and Charles takes Naomi Christmas shopping very busy there's a lot of people he loses sight of her and they lose each other in the crowd by the end of the day charles and laura are bereft and left with nothing but police sympathy sympathy because naomi is their only child and she's disappeared and days later she's found murdered but is she really dead and that's all in the back of the book i'm not spoiling anything that's really like the whole book is charles really cannot let go that Naomi isn't alive anymore. Like he, she's, he is convinced that she is within the house. It starts off really slow, but then it just doesn't stop until you close the book. It's a downright chilling sleep with the lights on. I had to stop reading it at night. I had to pick up a fluffy romantasy after this. There are certain tropes and traits within horror and they're all ticked in this book for me. Whispers in the dark, footsteps, upstairs, a figure at the side of your bed, terrifying imagery, increasing sense of dread, a very intriguing backstory, much like The Silent Companions. And this, yeah, this book ticks all of them. As I said before, the first half is pretty creepy and unsettling, but then it really ramps things up by the second half and it's just downright f***ing disturbing. And I really enjoyed that aspect, but this is definitely not for everyone. The ending is truly disturbing and grotesque and shocking. Yeah, I was so horrified and shocked by like the last 15% of this book. Also a very good ghost story, haunted house story. Then I have one of my favorite books ever. Definitely my favorite Stephen King. That's Pet Cemetery. Not only is it my favorite Stephen King, it's my favorite film adaptation of his work. I watched and read this at a very young age and I was traumatized, traumatized. Zelda in the back room whispering. I was like 11 or 12 and when I turned off the lights to my bedroom to go to sleep, I kept turning it back on and looking into the corner and on the opposite side of the room because I was convinced Zelda was gonna be there, like leering at me and just, Bleh! no. I mean, y'all probably already know the story, but if you don't, this follows the family, the Creeds, Lewis, his wife, and they have two young kids, a daughter and a young son, babe, toddler, Gage and a cat. They move into this beautiful home. Lewis is about to start a new job as a doctor at a local college there. They start to settle in and it's the start of the school season. This is also like a really good fall read because it's the start of the school season, like leaves are changing. Their very friendly neighbor, Judd, leads them to a path behind their house that leads to a pet cemetery where the local neighborhood kids have buried their pets. Whether or not it's a goldfish or the cat or whatever, it's just a pretty large cemetery that's been there for a really long time. But beyond that is the site of an Indian burial ground where some pets and people have been buried, but they don't come back right. And a horrible, horrible tragedy drives Lewis to test this theory. This is also one of the saddest books I've ever read and Stephen King also said this was such a painful book for him to write because I think he had a young one of his I think one of his sons was super young when he wrote this. It really explores how deep grief can drive a person. It's so depressing and upsetting and horrifying. There's so much great imagery in this book and oh it's just excellent. It's excellent. I love this so much. I've read it. The, this has been the book I 
Stephen King book I've reread three or four times. I've seen the movie more than that. So good. So good. Classic horror. Really excellent. Highly recommend. Okay and then I have another one that's very well known and you probably know about a lot about it already but if you don't this did horrify me a lot. I read this in high school and I remember reading it in my bed and just being like so freaked out. <laughs> the Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is about a father and a son. They're walking alone throughout what is left of America. Nothing moves. This landscape is like ravaged. There's nothing but ash left. There's no animals. There's very little people. There's very little food. Everything is covered in ash because everything burned when the world ended. Their destination is the coast. They have no idea what's going to await them there, but they know they have to move further south because the winters, they just can't cope with how cold it's getting. They really don't have anything. They have a pistol with a couple bullets to protect themselves. There's lawless bands and cannibals that stalk the road who have zero good intentions and they have a cart of some scavenged food and each other. I love that as the reader you aren't exactly sure what caused the event that ended everything. It doesn't seem like the dad does either. All you know is what they know and what they encountered day after day. My main thought while I was reading this is like there's no way in hell I would survive. No way. For me this is the most bleak and depressing post-apocalyptic read I've ever read. And I love post-apocalyptic books. If you have more recommendations, put them down below. I eat it up. I love traumatizing myself. It's a world where evil is the primal force. Ravaged landscapes, raining down ash, cannibals, people in rags, charred bodies, emptiness, grayness, hopelessness. There's so many bone chilling scenes and imagery of what they encounter traveling, the farmhouse, the basement. Holy shit. The Road is a truly disturbing book. It's absorbing simply because it shows us how man could act given the right set of circumstances. And it's a terrifying concept because it could be a true one. Oof. I mean I know a lot of people don't like Cormac McCarthy's writing style but honestly if you get past that it's a great read. I, I mean I'm kind of biased because I really like Cormac McCarthy right his writing. All right and the last book I have to recommend I also read this last year and he's my one of my new favorite horror authors. Such a fresh new voice in horror when we really needed it. That is Mary by Nat Cassidy. I loved this book. I also think Ari Aster would do wonders with this story. Big yikes. Big yikes. <laughs> I think it does give off Midsommar vibes in some aspects, some parts of the story, and that's not necessarily a spoiler because it, it's not a one-for-one one, Midsommar and Mary. Take with that what you will. This is about Mary who is very quiet. She's middle-aged. She's on the cusp of menopause. She's having a really hard time sleeping, but things start changing within Mary. She starts having Besides the onset of menopause and hot flashes, body aches, she can't look in the mirror without her face melting off. She can't look at other people, especially women, without their face melting off. And there's a voice in her head that's urging her to do very unspeakable things. Fired from her job in New York and gets a call from her aunt, who is a great character by the way. So evil, so horrible but she's a great really great she's written so well she moves back to her hometown i think it's in arizona she's hoping to reconnect with her past or herself get some growth self-care instead she starts having visions of terrifying mutilated specters with bags over their heads bleeding and it starts to increase in regularity she also begins auto writing these strange thoughts and phrases and she has no idea what any of it means. But then she soon discovers that these are the echoes of a past serial killer that terrorized this community years before. And these killings are starting again. I was never able to predict what was going to happen. I was never bored. Gory, it's intense, it's funny, it's so dark and disturbing. The novel throws a bunch of different ideas into the mix but also juggles them very well and there's a lot of imagery that really really freaked me out. But the woman with bag over their heads, there's like a little girl with like beetles crawling out of her mouth, the, this dark Hitchcock like manner that's full of secret, secret passageways, the twists, the turns, oh man. <laughs> I was so hooked and horrified. I will never forget Mary <laughs> and I will be talking about this book for a long time because I loved it so much and I love Nat Cassidy.
But those are all my scary books that have scared me. I would love to know down below if you've read any of these. What were your thoughts? What's the scariest book you have ever read? I would love to know. Possibly read it if I haven't already. I love seeking that out. I want to be scared. I want to be scared. Or scary movies. Put them down below. I've seen a lot so I don't know. We'll see if I haven't seen any because I watch them constantly. I think if you'd be interested in me doing a movies that have really scared me over the years. I would love to do that. Um, let me know if you're interested down below because I have been toying the, with the idea of this becoming a all content channel, mainly movies and books, but let me know down below if this something you'd be interested in. As always, thank you so much for clicking. Thank you so much for watching and I'll have a new video for you soon. Bye! Bye.